Hey folks, it's William with All Solar Texas, and in the last three years that I've been in business, Tesla's never had a product that I've been excited about, except they finally did it. They finally came out with a product that I'm willing to endorse. I can't imagine I'm even saying this. Stay tuned, and I'll tell you all about it. All right, but before we dive in, please make sure to like and subscribe if you find this content helpful. It helps us get out there in front of more people. If you're in the Texas solar market and just want a fair deal and don't want to deal with all the gimmicks and scams out there, just reach out to us, give us a call. You'll work with us directly. Uh, we answer the phone. There's, it's not robots. It's not an automated system. We're a small business here operating in Texas just wanting to run a clean shop. So we look forward to hearing from you. Email us. Check out our website. Okay, now in the last three years that I've been doing this, now I came out of the utility industry. When I came out of the utility industry, I was in construction at the time. I went into solar to help deliver energy independence to Texans everywhere, especially after that winter storm Uri blew through and there was all kinds of multiple outages out there. I said, we have to do something and we have to do something better. We have the technology and it's affordable enough. Now, at that time, there were many players in the solar game. Enphase was one of them. They just came out with a micro inverter that was extraordinary. It was revolutionary. It definitely changed the game on solar systems, solar design, and certainly the, the price point, the overall cost of solar. But there's been other players in this space for a while. Tesla was one of the players that entered the market not very uh, recent or not very early in the whole process. They acquired a company called Solar City that operated out in California, and they were really trying to get into the solar market. But no matter how hard they tried, their products never really launched. The um, issues that we were having with Tesla and their design packages and their early batteries, their early inverters, their early even roof shingles, if that's something that you wanted to, to go with, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, Tesla always has the brand appeal and the sex appeal and all of that stuff. They're flashy and their designs are, are top of the line. I've never had a problem with that. It's just the functionality versus the cost. So for a certain amount of money, you would get a battery that would perform okay. Um, that's why we never really took a stance that Tesla was a real serious player in the battery space, even though they had all the brand recognition. And of course, their, their cars are amazing and they're trailblazing in terms of the overall market on electric vehicles. When it came to solar, their batteries just couldn't cut it. First off, they were overpriced. These batteries were coming into the market very, very expensive, and there wasn't a whole lot of capacity to them. There, and there wasn't a whole lot that you could do with them. You couldn't turn on your air conditioner. You couldn't power your dish washer, your electric dryer, any of these things. Basically, you're looking at offsetting some time of use for electric consumption, or you're looking at maybe just powering some basic appliances around the house, like your refrigerator, your internet, your Wi-Fi, your lights, etc. So in this space, we were really looking at other types of battery manufacturers. Enphase had a decent battery, the N-Charge 10. Now that battery had similar issues as Tesla in that very limited capacity, you couldn't uh, power some of the larger appliances in your home, but the cost point was much less. It was much cheaper to go with an N-Charge 10 battery than it was to go with the Tesla power wall battery at that time. But we also had other batteries entering the market. Uh, we had Home Grid that was making a big splash. We had Fortress Power, and recently we had EG4 that entered the market about 18 months, two years ago. And those batteries were half the cost of any Tesla Powerwall, and they had twice, two to three times the electric storage capacity as the Tesla Powerwall. Now, all that was to say there was a reason why we did not really work with Tesla, that we had customer service issues, the battery wasn't super great, it was super expensive, so there was an affordability issue. And really, if you weren't part of the existing ecosystem, ecosystem of Tesla, there wasn't a whole lot of advantage for you to decide to go with Tesla. Now, if you already have a Tesla vehicle, an EV, a Tesla charger, then going with the Tesla battery wasn't a horrible option because it's all within that ecosystem, but the price point still wasn't there. All that has changed. It's changed dramatically in a huge way, and I'm super excited to be bringing uh, this to you as, as well as uh, other content that we're gonna be doing later uh, featuring the Tesla Powerwall 3. But last year, Tesla came out with their Powerwall 3. Now, 
Why was this so revolutionary? Well, they claim that they had an integrated inverter within the battery. So all you had to do was purchase the battery, which was 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage, which is not bad for a battery, especially when compared to uh, the InCharge 10 that maybe has 10 kilowatt hours of battery, or even some of the early Fortress power batteries where you could only get five to 10 kilowatt hours. This was a whopping 13.5 kilowatt hour battery. But the kicker was it had an integrated inverter and they were selling the entire system, the entire module for about the same price as a battery, as a standard battery. So now you got an integrated inverter and a battery with 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage for just the price of a standalone battery. Now, why is this so revolutionary? Well, if you take a look at standard systems where you have your solar panels, you have your, uh, your cabling, your wires, and then normally we would go with an in-phase micro inverter, you have that package, that system where every single inverter now you have to purchase because it goes with each individual panel. To to add a battery to a system like that, you're probably looking at another $15,000, $17,000 on top of the microinverter costs and of course the solar panels if you want to add an N-Charge 10 battery or even a Tesla Powerwall 2 battery to your configuration using those in-phase microinverters. Well, all of that added up. Now, if you can just purchase the Tesla Powerwall 3, you now get the inverter as part of that module cost, which means you're now saving on the added cost of an inverter. So when we're comparing apples to apples, if you were to design a system with solar panels and your, your wiring, your cabling and, and in-phase microinverters, there really wouldn't be much left in your budget if you didn't budget specifically for a battery to then add on a battery. Conversely, if you take a look at what Tesla's done, where now they have their single battery, but with an integrated inverter, that single inverter will handle up to 20 kilowatts of PV power input. That's phenomenal. So a 20 kW system can be managed within this Tesla the Powerwall, just a single one. And you could certainly parallel multiple. You could add multiples, which will not only expand your capacity for storage, but will also st uh, scale your capacity to generate uh, PV as well. If you take the cost of just the Powerwall 3 battery that now has an integrated inverter, you're saving the cost on the inverter, you're essentially getting now a full system with an inverter with battery storage for the exact same price, in some cases a little bit lower, than you would if you just purchased solar with Enphase microinverters. There's no battery that comes with that other system. So what you're looking at is two price points that are very similar, similar except you're getting battery storage with this Tesla Powerwall 3 because of that integrated inverter for the same price as you would just to go with Enphase microinverters and solar panels. Now this is huge. This is scaring the daylights out of Enphase. Uh, part of what I do on the side is I do consulting. I'll get these different uh, consulting agencies reach out to me to do market research. And I recently got berated with a bunch of invites from a company who I'm pretty sure, wink wink, is Enphase, trying to get an understanding from the customer and installer perspective of what is leading to the success of the Powerwall 3 for Tesla. Tesla is making huge splashes with this new Powerwall and they are stealing tons of market share uh, from the inverter side of the business, which has largely been controlled by big, large companies with a nice track record, such as Enphase with their very, very popular microinverter. Well, to be honest with you, it comes down to the price point and the capability. You have a very capable inverter with Tesla up to 20 uh, kilowatts worth of power output. With that same battery now, you not only get 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage versus an N-Charge 10, 10 kilowatt hours worth of storage. And if you just go with the microinverters, you get no storage at all. But in addition to that, there's enough amp output with these battery modules that you can start an air conditioner. You can run your dishwasher and your clothes dryer. So we have a much more capable battery at a much more competitive price point to where now, if you are a Texas customer looking to get into the battery storage configuration, it's a no brainer. So the last several jobs that we've been designing and that we've been installing have been Tesla. Before I would say September of last year, there's no way I would have ever gone for a Tesla Powerwall 2 as part of the configuration. There's no way they were too expensive and there was way more uh, batteries on the market with just much better performance. That has changed folks. So if you, uh, there's a really good chance if you call me today and you're not looking for off grid because Tesla Powerwall 3 is still not an off grid battery, but if you're looking to stay on grid, but you want some time of use or some basic battery uh, backup because you know, you want to be able to 
to power most of your house or several of your appliances during an outage, I'm probably gonna design you with the string system with the Tesla Powerwall 3. Now, one of the things that we are not including in that package are DC optimizers. So you're going to lose that individual panel performance monitoring that you normally see with the Enphase microinverter. But if you're looking at the trade-offs, you're giving up individual panel performance monitoring with the Enphase microinverter. But what you're picking up in that string system is 20 kilowatts of potential PV power input in a battery module that is now gonna give you, with the integrated inverter, 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage. And the price point is amazing. Right now, if you were to go online, if you were to buy two Tesla Powerwall 3 units, so that's two in integrated inverters with a uh, storage capacity of about uh, 27 kilowatt hours combined between the two, it's gonna cost you just over $17,000 before shipping taxes and, and before the install piece. But that's a very, very competitive price point. And honestly, I don't know how long they're gonna be able to keep that price point. I think Tesla is artificially you know, deflating their uh, sales price for this unit just so that they can capture as much market share as possible coming out of the gate early. And they're most likely going to start jacking up that price in the next six to 12 months. It's just something that I'm thinking about. I'm watching the Tesla stock price. I'm seeing all of the volatility with the Tesla stock. I'm seeing you know, the different things going on in the EV market right now where there's uh, less demand for their uh, electric vehicle. The Cybertruck has been an amazing uh, new offering as part of their electric vehicle fleet options, but they're not able to keep up with the with demand. So Tesla has a lot of challenges now, particularly financial challenges. And I don't know how much longer they're gonna be able to offer this incredible inverter battery combo, the Tesla Powerwall 3, at the competitive price that they currently are. So if you're interested in Tesla, if you're interested in going with the Tesla ecosystem, or you're just interested interested in going solar and, and you want the additional battery storage as an option, but you don't want to pay an arm and a leg, reach out to us, give us a call, text message us, email us, visit our website. We will make sure to work with you, design the perfect system to meet your energy goals. All right, folks, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us. Otherwise, thank you so much and God bless.